just because their parents have positions in ministry it doesn't mean that it fell on them God I can't hear nobody sometimes you got to go beyond people's title their position and where they sit in church that don't mean they holy I can't hear nobody some of the people that got the deepest prayer life only five of y'all gonna shout they weren't even raised in the church but they found God by themselves by accident living through a crisis that almost knocked the living daylight out of them but they are more committed to God than folk they got their grandmother's name on the side of a pew they don't know the song the choir singing they don't even own the bible all they know is one day when i was lost jesus died on the cross and i know it was the blood Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. And then we close at verse 18. When Tamar was told, your father-in-law is on his way to Timnah to shear his sheep, she took off her widow's clothes, covered herself with a veil to disguise herself, and then sat at the entrance um, to Enam, which is on the road to Timnah, for she saw that though Shelah had not grown up, she had not been given to him as his wife. When Judah saw her, he thought she was a prostitute, for she covered her face. Not realizing that she was his daughter-in-law, he went over to her by the road and said, come now, let me sleep with you. And what will you give me to sleep with you, she asked. I send you a young goat from my flock, he said. Will you give me something as a pledge until you send it, she asked. He said, what pledge should I give you? Your seal and its cord and the staff in your hand, she answered. So he gave them to her and slept with her and she became pregnant by him. You may be seated. It's in the Bible. When Tamar heard her father-in-law is on his way to Timnah to shear his sheep, she took off her widow's clothes, covered herself with a veil to disguise herself, then sat down at the entrance. When Judah saw her, he thought she was a prostitute because she covered her face. Not realizing that was his daughter-in-law, he went over to her by the roadside, propositioned her, and said, let me sleep with you. And what will you give me to sleep with you, she asked. I'll send you a young goat from my flock, he said. I want to preach for a little while as we continue in this series, Life After Love and Hip Hop. I want to preach. I'm just trying to get some. I'm, I'm just trying to get some. Don't look at your neighbor. Just look straight ahead. Uh, please, it'll make sense to you after a while. The bankruptcy of Toys R Us has left the dolls we've grown up with homeless. Barbie, G.I. Joe, Cabbage Patch Kids, and even Bratz dolls will be added to the endangered species list only to be shelved at the Smithsonian Museum. Almost as a wrinkle in time, we are seeing that youth are going to video games and adults are investing in sex dolls. The insane spokesman of the alt-right movement, Milo Yipanopoulos, tweeted to thunderous applause Girls, stop being nicer to your boyfriends. We're barely a decade away from real life sex robots. And they won't whine about the wage gap. 
the CEO of the company creating these sex cyborgs out of Vegas is quoted for saying, years ago when you got married, you stayed married and you were loyal. Now people cheat on each other. They lie and do things behind each other's back. And so the dolls serve as a substitute because there's no nagging, no child support, no arguments, and no alimony. In 1994, when sex dolls came into the market, the high-end ones cost 3500 The average price now is twelve to 15000 The industry's argument is not that it will erode relationships with people, but rather and instead create an alternative. Sociologically, psychologically, and spiritually, there are some fundamental emotional liabilities with this new entrance in human communication. Copulation is sacred communion for two that are under covenant. This entrance of dolls and robots disrupts God's intention for human interaction. Be leery of people who just want you to be their sex doll, who see you just as their robot because they do not expect you to have an opinion don't want to have meaningful dialogue and don't really want to be invested in your life. They think you can be programmed and want your only interest to be them. So as a consequence, they do not want you to give critical analysis, don't want you to offer suggestions, and they think your entire existence is built around pleasing them. You have to make up in your mind, I am not R2-D2. I have a mind, I have a body, and I have a soul. And as a consequence, you don't have the right to just minister to one aspect of who I am. I'm not one of the transformers, although I've been changed. Steve Harvey, the media mogul, talk show host, exploded the internet with discussions about his book turned movie, Act Like a Lady, Think Like a Man, with a 90-day rule, suggesting that this was the appropriate waiting period necessary before giving of yourself intimately to another in order for you to perform your due diligence. This advice went uncontested, coming from a self-professed Christian man with absolutely no detraction from the church. Then the acclaimed Hollywood figure, Devon Franklin, married to actress Megan Good, obstructed conventional thinking with his New York Times bestseller list book, The Weight, that aligns itself to the call to celibacy with biblical teachings. The problem is most of the people who read it didn't follow it. The New York Times Magazine recently reported that casual sex is the new norm for millennials. 37% have had casual sex already in 2018. That is somebody you are not married to, not in relationship, not in covenant, not in dialogue. It is as random as you getting a Pepsi from the corner store. I want you, please, would you arm yourself with a writing instrument? There's something I want to give you. If you don't have a sheet of paper close by, there is, in fact, a free app that came with your tablet or your smartphone that affords and allots you the space to be able to take notes. My old college professor said to me many years ago that a short pencil still is better than a long memory. So there are three positions on society's sexuality that I want you to write down. 
three positions of society's sexuality that I want you to have. The first one, I want you to write this down, is go to commercial. Go to commercial. In case you have not realized it, media has made casual sex normal. Before your child reaches 13, they would have witnessed 5,000 references, incidents, or overtures about sexuality before 13. 5,000 acts. Fifty Shades of Grey, the latest installment that came out this weekend, was the biggest R-rated movie in motion picture history. During the last Olympics, hotels took the Bible out of the rooms and replaced it with copies of Fifty Shades of Grey. Oral sex, bisexuality, heterosexuality, homosexuality, relationships turn, turn up in everything now from cartoons to sitcoms. For those of you who are parents, you go to a cartoon movie with your child sitting in there. You looking around trying to figure out if your child picked up what you just saw. Music used to be suggestive and now it's exp ex explicit. If I hit it one time, I'm going to wife you. And I'm talking about your jaw. <laughs> And so you are so inundated with sexuality that you're not even embarrassed by it. To go a step further, 15 years ago, this sermon, I couldn't have preached in church. Sexuality has become so normal that we have lost in a strand of that which is sacred. First position of society sexuality is go to commercial. The second one I want you to have, please write this down, is go away from the cross. First is to go to commercial. The second is go away from the cross. According to Pew Research, 20% of Americans ascribe to absolutely no faith. Did you hear what I just said? 20% of all Americans ascribe to having no faith. 20% of the entire U.S. population says that they are agnostic or atheist. Don't even believe God exists. In the absence of faith, we make ourselves a deity. So in the absence of faith, I need you to hear this, with no faith, sexuality carries no ethical responsibility. If I don't believe in nothing, then don't you know your body is a temple? Holy and acceptable unto God. So you can sit in church now and hear no word about being chaste. To hear holiness in church now almost sounds like a joke. Yeah, I hear you, preacher, but God knows my heart. I got earned urges, proclivities, yearnings, leanings that have to be met. And God, I'll get to him Sunday. Leave me alone Friday night. The question I want you to write down, please. Write it down because you're not even prepared to have a discussion. Where is God with my sex life? Put on the whole armor of God. Shield of faith. Sword of spirit. Feet shod in the preparation of the gospel. Helmet of salvation. Sword of the spirit. And here's the part we seem to always forget. Your loins are covered with truth. Now, Jesus said of himself, I am the way and what? The truth. Stay with me, class. So my loins,
sins are covered with the body of Christ. So in order for me to deal with that which is sexual, that which is intimate, in order for somebody to get to my intimate space, I've got to move Christ out the way so that they can come in. So if I am outside of covenant and engaging in that level of sexuality and it is outside of the will of Christ, then I am having sex outside of his consent. And so isn't it strange that my subconscious is in the middle of sexuality is when I slip in the prayer life. So in sex, I'm saying, oh God, stay with me, please. <laughs> because I understand that in that area, it's not, watch this, who it is that I have complete authority over. And in order to override that, I then want you to say my name. I know y'all need a nap right through here. So the first position of societal sexuality is to go to commercial. The second position is to go away from the cross. Here's the third one. I want you to write this down, please. The third one is uh, go to the commercial. Second, go away from the cross. The third, third one is gearing up the computer. Third one is gearing up the computer. With the rise of the internet, it is easier to get access to visual stimulation. There are more presently porn sites online than any other entity, watch this, including news. There's more porn sites than there is for information. I want you to write this down. It's going to blow your mind. For every church website, for every church website, there are 500 porn sites. Did y'all hear what I just said? For every porn site, for every church site, there are 500 porn sites. 32 million people go to Live Jasmine a month. 32 million, which accounts for 2% of the entire internet traffic. So 2% of people who are online at any time are on Jasmine Live. There are more people, watch this, on Pornhub than there are on Snapchat. Y'all look straight ahead. Are, are y'all okay? Okay, y'all. <laughs> Y'all I ain't heard y'all this quiet in a long time. <laughs> then you have the preponderance of dating or hookup sites like Tinder, Grinder, and Discreet, which help you to browse for a sex partner easier than finding a book on Amazon. Three people just hid their phone right there. <laughs> and so there's somebody right now scrolling for you trying to find you, not your mind, not your destiny, not your call, not your assignment. What can you do for my body? So you have reduced yourself to modern day technological slaves where your body is being checked out and your mind is being underdeveloped. For a slave, it was illegal for you to be caught with a book. And now you have lovers who don't want you to be learned. <laughs> so they want to know why it is that you're interested in anything outside of entertainment. Because that's not what they drafted you for. So on the lower third of your page should really read for entertainment purposes only. Because you have no intention of having a life partner because you perpetuate a cycle of just being a hookup. So you reduce yourself in the words of Jill Nelson in her book, Volunteer Slavery, that you now see yourself as a commodity. So all of your pictures on social media show you posing from the back. Look straight ahead. 
So your, your greatest offering is your weaving your soul in. So there is nothing about your conscience, nothing about your development, nothing about what you offer standing up. And so what it is that you're saying subliminally is that I can be bribed, I can be bought, I can be ordered. Watch this, because I don't see myself as real value. And so all I want to know is what is the trade? Are you going to help me with my rent? Are you going to do something for my car note? Are you going to pay for my aftercare? Are you going to pay for my nails to get done? But not, are you going to help me invest in this business? God, I can't hear nobody in here. Not, are you going to take me on a trip? Are you going to give me your last name? I need to know how it is that you think that I can be auctioned when I've already been bought with a price. And when I know what it is, is my value, is that can you handle me at a table, not on one? God, God, I can't hear nobody in here. Are you able to stimulate me without touching me? God, I can't hear. Can you say anything to me beyond what you would say to a naive 17-year-old? I can't hear nobody. I don't want to know what you're going to do to me. I want to know what you're going to build with me. And if your mind frame is not there, you got me four years too late. I can, can I keep it real? Because there was a day I'd be open to that. But in this season, I'm tired of rolling over and feeling empty and having a void and feeling like, why did I waste another number? I can't hear nobody. I need to know, is it going to be significant? Is it going to be substantive? Is there something in the long run? Because if you're in it just for a hit, you need to go to the shooting range. There's got to be something that will, in fact, develop me at a greater level and this sermon is not for people who aren't saved uh, come, come here it's, it's gonna get tight it's gonna get real tight I'm talking to those of y'all that love God feel with the Holy Ghost fall out speak in tongues go to the altar and cry and still got a sex drive in Genesis 38 we find a horror story that encases a life lesson. We find a young lady by the name of Tamar who's married to the wicked son of a preacher by the name of Judah. This man, watch this y'all, is so wicked that God kills him. Now the part that I need you to know is that she marries, watch this, a preacher's son. So one, one of the disclaimers that you have to have is just because people go to church doesn't make them spiritual. God, I can't hear nobody just because their parents have positions in ministry. It doesn't mean that it fell on them. God, I can't hear nobody. Sometimes you got to go beyond people's title, their position, and where they sit in church. That don't mean they holy. I can't hear nobody. Some of the people that got the deepest prayer life, only five of y'all going to shout, they weren't even raised in the church. But they found God by themselves by accident, living through a crisis that almost knocked the living daylights out of them. But they are more committed to God than folk that got their grandmother's name on the side of a pew they don't know the song the choir singing they don't even own the bible all they know is one day when i was lost jesus died on the cross and i know it was the blood she marries a preacher's kid who is wicked and God kills him. I need you all to hear this. God kills him because he doesn't know how to treat her. Y'all don't like this gospel. I got to preach this. I said God killed him because he didn't know how to treat her. 
I'm telling you that when God has his heart around you, it doesn't matter around your pedigree or your upbringing. He is so jealous about you that God cannot stand watching you be mistreated. I can't hear nobody. God loves you so much that he is only going to tolerate you being mishandled for so long before he intervenes on your behalf. I know some of y'all don't like this, but I'm telling you off the top of my head, two people gonna have to pay for how it is that they handled you because they thought you weren't much. I can't hear nobody, but God gave a warning. Touch not my anointed and do my servant no harm I'm telling you you were the best thing that ever happened to them and you ain't gotta key nobody car you ain't gotta slash nobody tire you ain't gotta put no nothing in nobody's tank you ain't gotta post nothing on Facebook God said if you hold your peace and let me fight your battle victory is gonna be yours She finds somebody in church. God, y'all ain't gonna like this. And the one she finds in church ain't right. That's a whole nother sermon. I can preach three more weeks on that. She finds somebody in church and that is not who God wants for her. So she finds another brother by the name of Onan and Onan intentionally wants to block her from getting pregnant. God, I can't hear nobody in here. You got to run from people who don't want to see you productive. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. There are some people who will celebrate you being stagnant because they are in love with you being weak. Because they know if you ever get strong and get a sense of independence, you will see how jive they really are. I'm telling you, God has spared your life. You ought to thank God you didn't marry that Negro while you were weak. But now that you understand who you are and what you deserve and what you require in this stage of your life, can I talk to five of y'all? I don't care what they drive. I want to know what driving them. I don't care what they got on. I want to know what they got within. Silly rabbit tricks are for kids. When I was young, you could buy me a bag and shoes. But now I want to know, are you flipping property? Are you making any investments? Are you thinking about your retirement in the long haul? Do you even have health insurance? I need to know where is your mind? She married wrong. I hope y'all have received this. She married wrong and married in church. <laughs> and that didn't work. Gets hooked up with a brother by the name of Onan, refuses to help her get pregnant, and then the father-in-law steps in. Father-in-law, y'all gonna y'all really is gonna give you a nosebleed. The father's name is Judah. That's by which we get the name praise. So here it is. He is the architect of praise and he sends Tamar off and says, uh, listen, I need you to come back. I got one more son. Uh, wait till he gets older and when he is older, I'll let you marry him. Tamar goes back home and realizes that time has passed and that man of God has no intention of living up to his word. God is getting ready to get tight. I, I, I repent on the body of Christ for spiritual leaders who have manipulated people and tried to make them wait for an appointment that never came to pass. Hallelujah. As long as I'm under you, you want to put your foot on me. But when you see me growing and evolving, you're going to use the devil and lie. It ain't time yet. It ain't the season yet. We got to wait yet. God told me to tell those of y'all that hear my voice, if you open up your mouth, God said, your time is now. You, you've been waiting long enough. You've been in the holding pattern long enough. You've been held back long enough. But this is your due season. And Judah sends and says, I'll come for you when the time is right. Time elapses, goes past, and Tamar never gets the call. 
and she comes to herself and says I'm being played God help me I'm, I'm telling you the devil is so afraid right now because there are nine of you who are coming to yourself hallelujah that realize you know what I'm bigger than this I I deserve more than this I can't hear nobody in here you, 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 you know you can cry for a minute hallelujah you can't believe you in that position and then Tuesday come and you suck it up and say you know what I'm gonna be all right this is not gonna kill me there's still something else that God has in mind for me says I'm, I'm, I'm being played and I, I got to do something aggressive about this and I don't know how many of you have ever felt like it that you just wanted to say don't keep me waiting God help me you, Eugene didn't even know what I was preaching on today but I um there, there, there are some of us that have been in this holding pattern and I'm tired of waiting God, I, I, I need God to hurry up and do something I, I need him to move on my behalf, but I'm, 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 I'm sick of waiting. I'm, hallelujah. I'm seeing people who don't even have my skill set pass me, and I'm, uh, people who don't even exercise my level of discipline, don't have a fraction of my competence. I'm tired of waiting. I, 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 I've been seeing stuff come and go, and, and I'm not jealous of nobody. I ain't threatened. I ain't intimidated. I just want to know when is it going to be my time? Is, 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 is there anybody in here that keeps looking at the clock and you done made up in your mind 2018 cannot be like 2017 I'm, I'm tired of waiting I done pushed other people I done supported other people I done prayed for other people I done invested in other people I done encouraged other people but I'm selfish unapologetically now when is it going to be my time God when will you do it for me says I'm tired of being kept waiting so she hears that the man that played her is coming to town and so she changes clothes she changes clothes watch this and uh, takes off the clothes that made her look like a mourning grieving widow and she dresses like a prostitute and here's where it gets interesting that nobody really unpacks is that she's standing on the corner dressed like a prostitute and the man of God the praiser <laughs> the one that leads worship on Sunday rolls right up on her y'all ain't saying nothing and doesn't say are you saved do you have a church home I can't hear nobody do you know God for the pardoning of your sins he, he walks right up on her watch this walks right up on her and says I want to sleep with you this the man of God I'm in Genesis y'all says I want to sleep with you and she watches this falls right in the position and says how much are you going to pay me and he says watch this I'll give you a goat I'll give you a goat watch this uh, which would have in fact been uh, what is necessary uh, as an endowment for somebody you get ready to marry uh, so I, I'm going to treat who I'm sleeping with like a wife I have no intention for covenant or for relationship, but I'm going to give you the perks without requiring the sacrifice. God, I can't hear nobody. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a goat. And she says, because uh, she's in church but still got hood sensibility, she says, I know you're promising me that, but what you going to give me to hold your pledge? I know some of y'all, this is going to be uh, too much for you to handle. Uh, but here's my prayer for you as pastor this week. I want you to know what I've been praying on your behalf. I've been praying, Lord, I know you have promised us some stuff. But can you give us something to hold me? Until everything you got for me is equipped and ready and released into my life. And he said, 1130 service, get ready. I'm going to give you something to hold you. He, he, 
he said don't fall in love with it it's just to hold you until the real thing comes and can I tell just five of y'all that are in this room who you dating right now that ain't who God got it's just to hold you to the real one comes can I tell you the job you got right now that ain't supposed to be no career it's just supposed to hold you until your real field opens up he says I'm gonna give you something I'm going to give you three things to hold you until you get what you really want. So the first thing I'm going to give you is my seal. S-E-A-L. I'm going to give you uh, my seal. Now watch this. Uh, anybody who had m means and access and wealth wore a signet ring. Wore a signet ring. It was to verify and to solidify all that was happening. Watch this. To do any transaction of business, you had to have your seal on it. You remember when Jesus was crucified when they put him in the tomb? Watch this, that the seal uh, was put on it. Watch this, to verify that it had been authorized by the Roman government. Says, I need your seal. Why do I need the seal? Uh, because if I have your signature, I have your authority. I need you to stay with me here because I can now use your name because your name is credit. Y'all going to get this in just one minute. So she says, I know you promised me a goat and you don't have a goat with you. Give me your name so I can use your authority. Hallelujah. But not only do I want your name, give me the cord that is connected to the signet ring. There was a cord that was in fact tied to the ring and that was the integrity or the legitimacy so that you did not have to deal with fraud protection. I can't hear nobody. So what it is that she was saying is I don't want just your name. I need the integrity that goes with your name because the cord is what gives me the line of credit. He shall supply all of my needs. Here's what I need you to have. According to your riches in glory. Now, there's a difference between according to and out of. Hallelujah. So when he is supplying all of my needs, he's able to do it just based off of the interest without taking anything out of the note. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. So when he blesses me, it don't even impact what it is that he has. But I'm being blessed according to what he already has. But not only does she ask for the seal and the cord, to me that ought to be enough. But she says, I don't want just that. I want the staff. Hallelujah. Why do you want the staff? Watch this because you remember that thy rod and thy staff, they comforted me. I wish I had some old school church people here that when Moses got to the edge of the Red Sea, he lifted up his staff so that everything that was in front of him had to part so that they could walk through to the other side. Can I tell somebody who is here that Jesus told the disciples when commissioning them, take nothing with you care not about what you're going to eat or what you're going to drink or where you're going to live don't even take money with you just take the stare hallelujah why am I taking the stare because that means I've got God given authority for leadership so here comes this woman that he thought was just a trick he thought was just a side piece a prostitute a hoochie mama but she had enough sense to say give me your signature but not just your signature give me your cord and don't just give me your cord give me your stare some of y'all got thrown off why because your mind got sexualized when I said give me some or all I want is some you thought she was talking about sex but here comes this single struggling woman who ain't got a man and can't find nobody to take care of her what she says is yeah I want some but it ain't what you think what I want is authority that even if I ain't got a man if I ask anything in his name it shall be added but not only do I want authority I want to be somebody with integrity look at your neighbor and say I don't care if you know who I slept with my integrity is still intact I know you sitting there acting like you ain't never slept with nobody but I need somebody who in the room that know my sexual history does not define my destiny because I get joy when I think about 
what he's done for me. I know y'all sitting here like y'all ain't never slept with nobody, but I need somebody who knows. He has a rod and a staff. They'll comfort me and they will open a door for me that my enemies can't close. Come on, Tonto, let's ride. Would you grab that neighbor's by the hand and say, neighbor, Valentine's is coming and I'm trying to get some, but what I need, you can't give me, but he will supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory. Y'all sitting beside somebody stuck up and tell them by Wednesday, everything that you need is gonna be added to you. Press down, shaking together and running over. You got authority. Y'all acting like pushovers, but I say you got authority to step on scorpions, to cast out demons, to break generational curses. I said grab that neighbor's hair and say neighbor, you sure you want to connect with me? I ought to tell you, there's a lot that comes with me that if two or three are gathered together in my name, it shall, it shall, it shall be broken. I'm not talking about money. I'm not talking about houses. I'm not talking about jobs. But God said if you shout today, I break every sexual soul tie. Whoever's in your spirit is broken. Is broken. Is broken. Don't wait till the battle is over. But shout like it's over. Lift up that hand, please. Lift up that hand, please. So Tamar does something I want you to have. Lift that hand. That is never preached on. It's amazing Tamar never gets remarried. But has authority has integrity God I can't hear nobody in here lift that hand please God said because of what you did you ain't never gonna have to sleep with somebody to make ends meet God I thought y'all were gonna shout better than that because you trusted in me you ain't gonna have to compromise yourself for bills because you believe that I am your provider you ain't gonna lay down with dogs and get up with fleas there's too much of a price on your life I want you to lift up that hand if you want God to trust you with authority give you integrity release your character back I refuse to let the devil play with your mind this week God I can't hear anybody I, I said I refuse to let the devil play with your mind this week I need that hand lifted I can't believe y'all are quiet right through here God said if you open up your mouth I'm pulling people out of your system God, God, God I can't hear nobody in here I wish you would open up your mouth. He said, if you cry out under me, ain't nobody going to be able to play with your heart and manipulate your feelings. God said, I'm pulling them out of your system. That hand is lifted. Let me pray for you, please. Hallelujah. I, I want you to have authority. I want you to have integrity and I want you to have power. But you can't do it if you keep prostituting yourself. You don't know your value and don't know your gift. Don't know your assignment. I don't know where it is that you are, but I need that hand lifted as high as you can. I feel there's glory in this room, please. You better than that. You deserve more than that. 
keep your dead flowers. I don't need no chocolate anyway. I can't hear nobody in here. I can cook myself some dinner, but if, if you think that's gonna make me indebted to you, you got another thing coming. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray over every lifted hand that today I want chains to drop, that nobody is in bondage to false obligation. Thank you, God, in this moment for what you're getting ready to do. You're going to exceed expectations. You're going to embarrass the enemy. I pray, dear Lord, that you'll put full coverage around my heart. God, I can't hear nobody. I need full coverage around my heart. God, don't let me get played again. Don't let me get hurt again. Don't let me get used again. Don't let me get taken advantage of again. God, I give you my heart. I'll never want to feel like this. I'll never want to go through it. And as a consequence, I trust you with everything. Those of you, your faith is connected to the faith of your pastor. And you believe that God is going to do it for you this week. Would you open up your mouth and give God your best shout of thanksgiving? I can't believe y'all not saying that. I said, would you open up your mouth? 